Greetings and salutations, y'all. This week, we are going to be making a cash and card holder. I know, the name is very, very creative. <laughs> Guess what it does? It holds cash and cards. Uh, I'm using a 4 to 5 ounce Chrome XL Cavalier from Horween. Currently, I'm clicking the, um, the pieces out for the wallet. I apologize for my voice. I am currently dealing with a flu, and uh, yeah, it's not it's not pretty, but I still gotta do the videos for you. So here you are, and now I'm wondering what else is in this clip. Ah, okay, yes, it's the pockets. Yes, um, I'm doing this one a little different because I'm doing, as you can see, I'm doing black leather, and I'm gonna do orange thread, and I think that that color combo looks really really cool um originally i had had this video i i'd done this video to come out during like october orange and black you know whatever um for halloween but just things got in the way and now i'm sick so i'm getting to it now <laughs> um okay so i'm putting in the groove lines decorative groove lines um on pieces Ironically, I was doing the other three wallet types that I do at the same time, and so that clip was actually from a different kind of <clears throat> a different kind of wallet. Um. Anyways, so here I am just gluing the main body together. So this is a double-sided wallet. There's no folds. There's no you know opening it or whatever. Um, and because I don't really want to show the, uh, the flesh side, which is the side I'm putting the glue on, on one side, and then have the top grain, which is the, the darker black top part, on the other side, I want it to be more uniform, so I take two pieces of the same size, and I glue them together, and then I'm going to glue the pockets on either side of that, um, I just switched to this glue and it is fantastic. I've used multiple other kinds of glues before this and I was watching a Weaver Leathercraft video, old Chucky boy, Chuck Dorsett's fantastic, um, and he was recommending this glue and I decided to try it out. It's actually way cheaper, it dries a lot faster, it's from an American company and it's just overall really good. Um... With glue, you always want to let it dry to clear mostly so that you can see like it's, it was mostly dried to clear and you'll feel that it's tacky. So like it'll feel dry, but it'll stick to your finger a little bit, but your finger won't be wet. Um, and here I am, I'm just trying to get those edges lined up the best I can. Um, for this wallet specifically, because there's so many layers stacked up. I actually trim the edges to get perfect edges. You'll see that in a minute. Um, here I'm using what is called a weighted roller just to roll out any air pockets that might have formed in the middle of the wallet because you really, really want to avoid... <clears throat> you want to avoid those when you're, when you're gluing because they can cause problems later. Okay, so I didn't show it, but... I used a roughing tool to kind of disturb the grain and get it to be a little more fibrous for the um, for the glue to like grip onto something. You can see it's roughed up there compared to everything else. Um, you have to do that with any leather that is like super has a really 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 heavy finish on it, um, which this one does. It's very waxy, which it breaks in beautifully and it develops a really nice patina. It's just a little more difficult with glue, which is another reason why I love this glue because this is the only glue I've ever used that actually works with this leather, which is pretty awesome because I've been doing this for like six and a half years and I've only just discovered this glue. So, yeah. Um, oh, okay. This is 
Oh, here we go. Okay. So, yeah, now I'm putting on the other pocket. I probably could have waited, in all honesty. Um, sometimes I admittedly get kind of impatient with, <laughs> with waiting for the glue to dry. Yeah, sorry. I'm also managing a little bit of a snotty nose right now as I'm talking. And as I talk, my nose tends to run, so I apologize for that. I'm hoping by next week's video I should be past the, the brunt of it. Then it'll sound better. Um, okay. So, here I am trimming. And I have a trim allowance built into the wallet. Um, and I'm using what is called a Japanese skiving knife. You can use multiple things. Um, I, I found that this is just the best way to do it for me. Um, I tried using a utility knife, which is what I use to cut everything else. And the only reason I don't use that is because um, none of my straight edges really stay put on this leather because it has such a waxy finish that it tends to like slide. So I tend to have mistakes there. Um, yeah, so one part I don't ever really show in my videos is uh, I've got a sander where after I curve these edges, I'm going to sand all of the edges. Um, the only reason I don't show that is because it's honestly it's in my garage and the garage is really messy and I just have this one little like sanding wheel on one little section at the end of a table in the middle of a mess and it's not very pretty so I don't tend to show it uh let me know with a comment if you want to see that I can I can maybe I'll do like a, a shop tour or something like that okay here I am putting in chisel lines <laughs> Um, I've showed this many times. These chisels are from Weaver Leather. Which, by the way, if you are a leather worker and you are looking for, like, the essentials, um, I've got links to all of the stuff that I use in, this, in the description of every single video. Um, yeah. These chisels... So, you can get different chisels and... Um, most people will either use these, which are flat chisels, or they'll use diamond chisels. I used to use diamond chisels. I just don't have a set in good sizes. If you're going for more of like a classic machine stitch look, the diamond chisels are definitely the way to go. Which, yeah. So, um, I am currently using the Ritz Tiger Thread. Um that's the only hand sewing thread that i use primarily it's for the super bright colors i just think it i just think it looks so good like y y okay you can't see because i'm not apparently not good at videographing and i've got that bright window right behind my shot but uh you know <laughs> i don't know what the heck i'm doing what the heck okay but the orange is super super vibrant um and you'll see in the ending shot where i kind of like show off show it off more but it looks so good it just pops so much and whatever they do with the weaving of the thread it stays together so well and i've never experienced that with any other um hand sewn thread so i highly 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 recommend that um that kind of thread i use the 0.8 thickness that seems to be like a good balance um where it's not too light to where it looks flimsy but also not too heavy to where it's just like overpowering on a bigger project i might use a thicker thread like i'm going to be doing a video on making a pair of boots because i'm still on that quest and i use uh i, th I think it's one or 1.2 millimeter thread and it's super heavy and it looks great um because it's a much, much bigger project. It's all about scale with these things. Um, maybe one day I'll try and go into more detail on how I kind of decide on that stuff and like decide on the overall design. I'm just not, I don't know really how I would explain it, but again, let me know with a comment if you want to see that. Um, 
yeah, I'm doing a basic saddler stitch. I've talked about how to do hand sewing before, and I've been meaning to do a good, like, in-depth tutorial video. I'm actually gonna maybe get a camera soon that would help me do a really cool POV shot. But here it's ending, so here's the money shot. I'll see y'all next time.